um, hello friends uh, in today's uh, video I am going to demonstrate the different types of projects that come with uh, Visual Studio 2022 so as we all know uh, Visual Studio 2022 has not yet been released in its uh, final production version and we expect it to be coming out later this year however we do have the preview version which I will be using here so as we can see here um, currently we have preview 2.1 and I'm using the community edition of uh, Visual Studio 2022. And this is the uh, preview 2.1. Uh, it's 64 bit, as we all know. And the different uh, workloads that I have installed uh, in my current installation include uh, web applications, desktop applications, and uh, cloud applications, Azure development applications. So these are the three workloads that I have uh, deployed with my installation. So with these three workloads installed, we will take a look at what uh, different types of project templates come with Visual Studio 2022 and what type of applications are we going to, uh, can uh, we can build using uh, these different templates. So let us begin. So I have this instance running. Here we will add a new project. So we will go through the, the complete list, uh, which we see here. Uh, I have selected C Sharp as the language, all platforms and all project types. And here we have a long list of different uh, uh, project types that we uh, get templates for. So basically a template would give us some boilerplate code, uh, which we can modify and use and uh, and build our applications upon. So the first type of uh, application we see here is uh, the standard console application. And uh, if we select this application, we will uh, see it asks us for the project name and solution. If we go further, it uh, goes with the .NET 6 preview uh, framework. So .NET 6 uh, preview framework comes with Visual Studio 2022. I do not have any other versions installed in, in the core family. So that's the only one we see. So this is the first type of a template, very standard console application template, which allows us to create uh, uh, C-sharp uh, applications, uh, console applications, which would run on Linux, Mac OS, Windows, and, and the type of course is console. So even the, the different platforms that are supported, since it is .NET 6, or it is, uh, you know, in, in other places, we could have .NET Core uh, listed as an option as well. These are all available for, uh, for creating the console application. And when uh, uh, we do not have any specific framework mentioned here, it is mostly the core family or the .NET 5 or 6 family. If we go down here, which we will go through later, we will see uh, the older framework versions are mostly covered with the .NET framework word in front of them. So if we select one of these and we move on, here you can see the particular older .NET framework uh, version is listed. So coming back to our list, the first type of application we have seen is the console application. Moving on, the second type of application is an ASP.NET Core web application and this will again create an ASP.NET uh, Core web app and, uh, which is going to be based on Razor Pages. So this is not the standard MVC, but it will be the, the architecture for Razor Pages where every page would sort of have its, uh, uh, its uh, I would say, controller, controller class associated with it. And again, this is uh, based on .NET 6, so we see it is available on all the different types of platforms, also available for the, for the cloud. Moving on further, the next uh, type of project we have is the Blazor WebAssembly app. This is to build uh, the new type of Blazor uh, web apps, which uh, run on the client side and are done using C-sharp uh, code. So no need to 
learn JavaScript and unlike Angular and React, which have JavaScript libraries, you can build your web application totally on the client side uh, using C Sharp code. Uh, again, this uh, lists the, the language C Sharp and the different uh, platforms. Moving on, we have uh, again the very standard class, class library. So in case we need to create a class library, a project which is sort of a middle tier business logic layer uh, in C Sharp, again, targeting uh, .NET Standard and .NET Core, of course, uh, if we go into this, we will see uh, it defaults to .NET 6. So again, this is again the standard class library that is used uh, across uh, different types of uh, project. Uh, going further down, we have a template for Azure functions. So in Azure, we know we have those uh, uh, serverless uh, architecture and functions is sort of one of the core component of them. So we can uh, build these uh, functions with this very useful template. And as you can see here, this is more specifically for uh, Azure and the cloud. So we just see these two tags over here, Azure and cloud here. Moving on, we have the ASP.NET Core application, which is empty. So unlike the previous one, which would give us sort of some mode for uh, for Razor pages, this would give us an ASP.NET Core application, but it's going to be empty and we would have to add our controllers or web API controllers or whatever particular functionality we would like to it ourselves. Moving on, uh, again, we have the ASP.NET Core web app. This is the MVC, the standard uh, uh, you know, MVC application template uh, in which we can uh, use Razor side, uh, uh, Razor syntax to create the views. And it's, it's the standard MVC controller uh, uh, architecture in these apps. And, and it gives us some boilerplate code, some controller, some views, and we can build upon that. Moving on, uh, we see we have the next uh, application, which is the Blazor server app. So this is, again, a Blazor implementation where the web app is built using C Sharp code, no need for JavaScript. However, the application is going to run the server within a ASP.NET Core application, and uh, it's going to be more server side. So unlike the previous uh, WebAssembly, which was uh, totally downloaded and run on the client. This sort of runs more on the server side. Moving on, uh, another very commonly used type of template, the ASP.NET Core Web API. So this is for building services, Web API services, using the, uh, the .NET Core or .NET 5 or 6 uh, framework. And again, uh, this uh, template would give you some boilerplate code uh, a cup. Um, I think it gives uh, one uh, controller and a service link to it, and that sort of uh, helps you get started with building further APIs as per your requirement. The next type is gRPC. So this is sort of a replacement for WCF, and uh, this is for building uh, the SOA uh, type structure applications, mostly business to business or where certain enhancements or something doing something beyond the standard web api more concrete business to business or uh, uh, more uh, robust and i would say services with more features so this is sort of a, a next generation or a replacement for the previous wcf which we had in the standard moving on we have the worker service this is a service which is uh, Basically, we can call it an enhancement over the standard console application, which gives it a lifetime. It can be kept on a host and it is used uh, a lot in uh, web applications, uh, sorry, in cloud applications as well. As we can see here, cloud is mentioned. And if we want to do some uh, some some uh, housekeeping task or some process uh, uh, on, on the cloud, uh, in the background, we can create a worker service for this. Again, these are all applications which are based on the new .NET Core or .NET 5 or 6 architect, uh, framework architecture. Moving on, we have uh, a template for ASP.NET Core with Angular. This gives us a very neat type of uh, boilerplate code structure in which the client side is built upon Angular uh, and the 
and it has a controller, so a backend controller, which is based upon ASP.NET Core, and, and a small working example in which uh, data is sort of uh, read from the Angular app and passed through a service uh, into the controller. So the front end is Angular, back end is C -sharp, uh, a C Sharp Web API controller. So a neat uh, template over there. Similarly, the next one is, is exactly the same, uh, but on the front end here we have React in case we want to add that type of application. And below that is again a React application with Redux also uh, included in the mix on the front end and uh, a standard ASP.NET Core web API controller on the back end. And so if we are going to use any of these three architectures to build our application, we can say that these are very good starting points. Moving on, uh, we see we have the MS test test project. So if we want to create uh, unit tests based upon MS test, this would give us the template. Uh, next one is N unit test project, the one which I've used the most. So if we want to build N unit tests, uh, again, we can uh, use this to create a project uh, for building N unit tests. It sort of gives us the, the template, the starter point. And then we, we move on into the first uh, template, which is specifically for the older .NET framework. This is a Windows form, Forms application. So the standard Windows Forms application, which we built uh, in days gone by. If we want to build something like that, which we also called Win, we can use this particular template. And then we have this Win Windows Forms application, something very similar to the uh, one above, but this would be sort of using the .NET uh, Core or the .NET 5 or 6 uh, technology. So if we select this and we go on here, we see this is based on .NET 6. So although this is uh, this is using the, the latest technology with uh, .NET Core or .NET 5 and, or 6, like in this example, we see that this is only specific for Windows and desktop. So this uh, template or this environment does not yet have support for other environments like Linux or Mac OS. Then we have the WPF application. Again, this is based upon the .NET 6 uh, framework. The WPF class library, again, this is for building class libraries for our WPF solution. And the WPF user control library. So if we want to build a user controls, uh, a library for our WPF applications, we can use this template. Going further down, this is the WPF application. Uh, with the old .NET framework. So if we select this, we see here we get the older framework version. And this again is also for now is limited. Uh, of course, this was always limited to Windows and desktop. Unlike, uh, uh, well, similar to the, the one we saw before, the WPF application, which is based on .NET 6, but still limited to Windows and desktop. Moving on, we have the service fabric application. Uh, service Fabric application is a scalable uh, microservices architecture, uh, which was introduced and is, uh, you know, part uh, can be found on the Microsoft Azure cloud, and it's used for building scalable distributed microservices. Uh, interesting architecture. Uh, I would certainly uh, recommend you read up about it, and this template would give you some a good starting point to build. Uh, both uh, stateless and stateful services. Uh, the next uh, template is the Azure Resource Group. This is to build an Azure Resource Group deployment project. In case we want to deploy different resources, we can use this template. Then we get into more of the older .NET framework templates. We have the console app, the standard console app, the ASP.NET web application, which is to build uh, MVC web API and all and web forms. So all this, the standard older type of uh, ASP.NET applications we built with .NET Framework, this would give us that template and an option to select the one we want to use. Uh, then we have the class library for .NET Framework, pretty simple, the Azure Web Job. So this was web jobs which allowed us to build uh, jobs that would run in our Azure Web Apps, something again which was built in the past and sort of uh, is not uh, is has not carried forward to the current structure much. 
Then we have a unit test project with MS test unit tests in the .NET framework. We have the X unit test project. This is uh, again a project which runs on the .NET Core or .NET 6 as in this case. Then we have uh, this uh, new project. I haven't really uh, done much work with this template, but it is something to build unit tests which would automate UI testing within the Edge browser. So it's it's more targeted towards the Edge browser. We have the .NET Core version and the older .NET Framework version. Something uh, to look into if you are uh, thinking about building automated uh, uh, unit tests uh, which would test your UI in the Edge browser. Then we have the Windows service. We all have been building Windows services in the past and uh, build a new Windows service. Again, the old .NET framework it gives us a very good uh, starting point for that. WPF browser applications. So if we want to run our WPF application in the browser, we had this facility and uh, not sure if it's used much anymore, but again, it's on the older .NET framework but we have a template for that as well if somebody wants to build uh, that type of project. WPF for custom control library, user control library, again, different types of controls building for WPF on the older .NET frameworks 4.8 and prior to that, uh, before .NET Core, we could, you know, we could say. And then the Windows Forms uh, control library, so building control libraries for the Windows Form architecture, again, the older .NET uh, framework. Uh, moving on, we have a shared project. If we want to build a shared project, we have an empty project in .NET framework uh, to which we can add our classes and, and work accordingly. We have the Razor class library. This is for building a class library for our Razor app. And here you can see again, uh, it's uh, again, we are back with the uh, .NET Core or .NET 6 family, and we see it is compatible on other platforms as well. We have the Windows Forms class library. This again is uh, for building different class libraries, and the one below is building Windows Form control libraries. And these, although uh, are both targeted on .NET 6, but so far, the whole uh, paradigm for WPF and Windows Forms application is more limited to Windows as we can see here. So this was a, a very quick overview of the different types of templates we get when we select the desktop, web, and Azure or cloud development workloads and the types of uh, boilerplate code that is available to us. So if we are building a project geared towards uh, these architectures, I would suggest we uh, always uh, go through and first uh, get a good understanding of the templates. It gives us sort of an understanding of how Microsoft would like us to set up our project and how we can proceed with it. So uh, that's all for the current video. And in future videos, we would certainly look at some of these project types in more detail. Thank you and uh, happy coding.